I'm back working on my Rhodes Metal Shaper restoration. In the last video you saw me turn this into this. Now that I've got things mostly back together, it's time to start remaking some parts. I'm going to start with this taper pin. I wouldn't be opposed to buying a taper pin if I could buy a taper pin, but they're easy enough to make. Old worn out lead screw, new piece of 4140. It actually turns out that this feature mics the same as the outside diameter of the stock. This holds the dial. There's a little hole that holds a little spring and a little piece of felt to hold that in place. Just to make double sure, I'm gonna do this first. It would be kind of a pain to get through making the whole thing and then come back and realize the dial doesn't fit it. I'll add the little felt piece over the spring later. I'd say that's pretty good. I don't really have room to get the die handle in here right now. That end's done. I'm trying to mimic the profile of this piece to fit into the recess on the machine. To figure out where the hole goes in this thing, I'm going to get it screwed in here and then just transfer punch through the end. I got that all nicely centered up, even ran the indicator along here to make sure it's squared up. Ran the center drill up and it looked like that. And then I realized it was because this wasn't seated in the taper. Funny. I'm glossing over threading these because I've already done a video on Acme threads. I'll leave a card up in the corner. This is pretty badly worn in there, so I just made a little thrust washer for it. Almost fits. So this piece is cracked here, and here, and there, and it looks like it has a collar pressed on there to keep the back from splitting out. Looks like it was cast iron. I've got some 1045, maybe quarter of 11, make it out of that. Um, on this piece, the critical dimension is actually the distance between the bottom of this hole and this face. 
So if I shift this hole over, I can probably make it a little bit thicker. Beef this up, beef that up a little. So I've got this thing sitting down in the bottom of the vise here, kind of as a V-block to locate it. So I can turn it and I won't have to find the center again. But the nut on the vise will hit this before it clamps in, so just a little block there. With this in the collet block, you can keep it on center and in the right orientation to do the slot in the top. This eccentric does need to get timed on here so that it advances on the back stroke. Probably something like that. Can adjust it later. I want to power this thing with a treadmill motor and basically do a poly V to flat pulley system. So I'm going to lose the V belt pulley. I've got a chunk of cast iron that's the right size, but part of the bore is actually a little too large, so I need to bore that out and sleeve it. This is a little stub of scrap I had, so I reamed it and put it on a mandrel to turn the entire outside of it. I don't want this coming apart, so I used the heat treat oven to heat up the cast iron. With about four or five thousandths of interference, the inner piece drops right in. We'll let that cool for a while.
I've got the compound set at a slight angle to put a little crown on the pulley. I flipped the part around one more time without moving the carriage or the cross slide, so this should make it nice and symmetrical. I got this the door was missing here and in doing research on it I came across a website that I'll link to below with a ton of information about these machines and the gentleman that runs it had CAD modeled basically the entire machine and was kind enough to share the door model with me. I can cut a pattern to cast this on my CNC but there's no draft on this model so I decided I'm going to do a lost foam model, which doesn't need to be removed from the sand. I decided to cast this in zinc, which I found out afterwards isn't actually hot enough to burn out the foam. And I had some issues with sand float. This was obviously not a successful casting, but I think that the piece of metal I need is somewhere in this lump. The robot knows what this is supposed to look like, so I'll let it do the work. After I got through the top one, when I hit the bottom one, the drill bit started walking around here and not centering, so I put it back on the machine and used the transfer punch to get a really good center hole, and then back to the mill this top hole was deflecting the drill bit, so I put a 1 8 drill bit in here. I'm going to hit that center hole with it, get a really good center start, and then go back in and finish it with the quarter inch bit. Before I paint and fill this, I want to even it out as much as I can, get rid of some of the tool marks from the CNC. And the normal way to do that would be to sandblast it, but without a blast cabinet, that makes a big mess. So I'm using the needle scaler.
So this is one where I'm really pleased with the result, but not necessarily the process for getting here. I should have gone back and redrawn this and drafted it and done a wooden pattern and all that, but it's hard to argue with the result. I think that wraps up the restoration phase on this. It's all back together. Now I just need to put a motor on it. And I think that'll wait until next time.